So you've been using codes to create an AI chatbot. That means that you've given your bot a persona using prompts, some extra skills with plugins, and then also intelligence using knowledge bases. However, you wanna customize it even more so that your bot knows how to really complete tasks tailored towards your specific needs. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to use workflows so that your bot knows how to complete multi-step tasks. Let's head over to the Code's workspace so I can show you how workflows can really enhance your bot. All right, so I'm creating an MBA bot. And the purpose of this bot is to give me the latest information, the statistics and the scores of all the NBA games that are happening this season. And not only that, I'll be able to look at games that happened in the past and previous seasons and also games that are happening in real time. So this bot is pretty powerful and workflows are gonna help us get there. So there's actually no need for me to really even look at ESPN anymore because I have my own personal assistant. So if we look at our persona and prompts, I have a character set with some skills and constraints. And over time, I'll be able to add more to this to enhance our bot even further. So if we look at the skills here, we don't have any plugins or workflows right now. So the reason why is because we haven't created it yet. And also because I want to show you the difference between how this operates without a workflow versus towards the end of the video, how it operates when we do add the workflow. So let's ask this bot what the scores were for January 20th, 2024, and we'll see the difference later on. So let's see how this bot generates a response. So I do remember watching games on this day, and I don't remember any of these games happening. The Warriors never played the Rockets, and the Lakers did not play the Milwaukee Bucks on this date. So this is where workflows are going to come into play. We're not sure where this data came from. However, with workflows, we'll be able to set up a multi-step task in order for us to get the most accurate data and deliver it to our user in a uniform way. So what we'll do now is we'll go over here to add workflows and we'll create our workflow. And we'll name our workflow MBA workflow for now. And the description box is a place that you can describe your workflow, of course. However, it uses a large language model to help our workflow understand how it needs to be invoked. So we can just say, get the latest NBA scores. Okay, so the first thing to understand about workflows are nodes and nodes are the basic unit of what make up workflow. And nodes connect to one another in order to get an end result. So think of a node as a step that it takes in order to give our user the specific answer that we want. So we have our starting node here that it comes with, and this starting node is where the user puts an input or the question that they're asking. And then the other node that uh, the workflow gives us is the end node here. And the end node is what produces our output and returns the value that we're looking for here. So that would be our answer. Now, there are a few other nodes that go in between the start node and the end node. And if we bring our attention here to the left side, we'll see that we have basic nodes. So we have our large language model node, which invokes a large language model, and it can gener generate a response based on the input that we give it. And then we also have a prompt that we can have to specify our answer even more. And I'll show you how to use that too. We also have our code node here, which allows you to process an input variable and it will generate a return value. So with workflows, just keep in mind, you don't need to know how to code. However, it does help a lot if you do have this knowledge because being able to get these specific answers from things like plugins or APIs, you're gonna be required to know how to code or at least understand what's going on to get the results that you want. Now, the next node that we have here are the knowledge nodes. And this is a node that uses the knowledge bases that you create and matches information based on what you're asking here and what your inputs are. Then we also have our if condition and our variable nodes here, which are a little bit more related to coding. However, these are to help with logic. So our if condition here will allow us to um, actually make some type of decision. If something's happening, then do this. And our variable node here is to help us read and write values so that we can store things and pass them on when we need them to be. Um, so 
not only do we have these basic nodes, we also have plugins that can be nodes and workflows that can also be nodes. So you can also use another workflow that you've created as a node itself. But in this video, we're not going to cover that, but uh, we're actually going to talk about plugins here. So with plugins, we have plenty of plugins like Reddit, Microsoft Outlook, Slack, Google search, you name it. However, these plugins right here aren't really going to specifically give me what I want. So I took my time to create my own plugin and this plugin connects to an NDA API that I'm able to grab the data that I want. So this data consists of games that happened in the past or even games that are happening right now in real time. So I'm able to grab the scores and stats and also even see who even officiated the game. Now I might not need all that information to create this workflow. However, we're going to use bits and pieces of it. All right. So let's add our MBA node here from our plugins and we'll just drag it here to the middle. Now, what we'll do is actually name this starting input that we have here. And we're just going to name the starting input date because this is where the user is going to be asking their question. Um, so this question is based off of the date that we're going to be sending to this NBA API node that we have here as well. So our description, we'll just set this simply as what this is going to do. It's just going to be taking a date in by a format and the format doesn't really matter because it's going to be running through an LLM anyways. So it's going to be able to determine the date based on how we rewrite it. Now, the next step is we're going to connect our starting node to our NBA daily data node that has our NBA plugin in it, right? So this plugin is already created and it's already looking for this game date here. So we're using the game date to determine where, uh, what games are being played. Now this game date, we're going to reference this to the input that we have from the start node on the date. So we're connecting this date, this question of what games happen on this date to this NBA node. That's actually a plugin that connects to an API. And this API has all of the data that we need for games that are happening in real time or games that happened in the past based on the date that we ask. Now, when we use this plugin here, we have this payload with all this data. And so for the next step, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a code node here so you can see what it looks like when we connect all this to code and we start to parse out this information. The code node requires the most amount of complexity here, but it's not required for you to make a workflow. I'm still going to show you how to do it anyways, because it is important to know the power that this code node can actually bring to your workflow that will then be presented in your bot. So we'll go ahead and we'll connect this daily data node to our code node, and I'll use a block of code that I've already created and I'll explain it and go down each line. But before we do that, let's take a look at these inputs. I want to make sure that I am getting the inputs that I need from this NBA daily data node. So I'm going to need a few things. Let's look through this uh, payload that we get. So we look through here through date and I definitely want some games, all this data from who was the away team to the profiles of the players all the way to the game count as well. So let's take this input and we're going to name it games. And then we're going to have this reference our NBA daily data payload. And we'll look for here in date and we'll get games. And then I'm going to add another input here for the games count. So I want to be able to tell my user how many games happened on that day as well, because every day is different. So I'll take this, I'll go to NBA daily data. And then I'll also go to my payload, my date and game count. And it's just great because I can go through all these different fields here and customize my response, how I want it to look. So now that I have these inputs here, let's take a look at this code block a bit. Now this code block, all it's telling me is to go through the uh, list of games that we have inside of our payload. So it'll tell me all the games that are happening, create a new array of these games and bring me back the profile the box score, who the home team was, and who was the away team. And here, all I'm saying is bring me back the city of the home team and bring me back the name of the home team and the same thing for the away team as well. 
So I'm just going through all this information that's being taken from this node and passed to the code. And I'm just splitting it into little tiny chunks so I can only get the information that I'm actually looking for and not a bunch of other things that are not necessary. Now for this output, what I'll do now as well is I'll set up my output so that my things that I'm getting as my input from here are going to be passed on to the next node, which will be my large language model. So I want these same inputs, these answers for what were the games and how many games happened. And then within that same uh, information we're getting from this node, we'll get the profile, the box score, who the home team was and who the away team was and so forth. So let's go here and add our games. And we'll keep this as a type string, right? Cause it's just the text. And then we're gonna add another one here for game count and we'll change this to a number because it's just the number of games that we're going to be presenting to the user. So the next step is to create a large language model node and put it here in order to connect to our code node, because this large language model node is going to be able to take this information that we have in this unreadable format and make it more legible for our user to understand. So, what I'll do now is I'll take this large language model prompt that I've already created as well, and I'll put this inside of our large language model node. So let's move things over to the side and we'll connect our nodes together. All right, and let's connect this to the end node here. And what I'll do now is change my GPT model to GPT-4, and I can keep the temperature the same, but the things that are different is I'm going to take this input, right? Is actually going to be referencing our input of the games. So I'm going to put games here and then I'm going to reference what I'm getting from this code node. It's being passed down. So this input that I put here for the games that's getting from the plugin, and then it's spitting back out here through this output. I want to pass this output all the way to this large language model. So let's go here and take from our code, I want the games. Now I have a prompt that I've already written as well. And this prompt is just describing what I want this workflow to do with the data that I'm passing to it from the code node. Now, this is just going to be able to tell our uh, large language model exactly what we want. And it's going to be able to output inside of our end result a lot better than how it would without this large language model. So for this output, I'm just going to custom make this to game results and I'll just do game res for short and I'll keep this as a string because this is just going to be a text again, that's going to hold all the information that I want. And I'll just say that this is the results of the games. Okay, great. So now I have everything ready to go and it's connected to my end note here. Now my end node is pretty much how I want my result to be formatted here, right? So I'm already have all the information that I need. And now I'm just being able to present it to the user the way that I want to with this end node. And I'm going to take this game result that we have, and I'm going to have that as an input. But before I do that, let's add an answer with a direct answer content as well. And this is where we're going to be able to format our response the way we want it to be. So we'll take game results, we'll do game res, and I'm going to reference that to what we're getting from our large language model. All right. I'll also take my date that I'm going to be taking from the user from the beginning. Right. So I have to reference my date from the start. And then I also am going to take my game count. Right, so we have our game count because we want to have our amount of games that we're going to present to our user as well. And we have our game count is coming from our, uh, our code, all right? So now all we need to do is create some type of answer content and we're going to customize how this answer is going to look. So um, we're going to use the same input fields in order to do that. And I've already had this written out here so that when it does print out to the user and they ask, Hey, tell me the scores for this specific date, it's going to list it in a way that we have this formatted here. So the bot's going to say there were blank amount of games on a certain date. Here were the results. So now we have all these nodes connected and let's give it a test run and see how it works. So we have this date here. We'll submit for the 20th of January and we'll submit it and let's zoom out a bit. 
and we're going to see how this workflow is being used here. So we have our starting node is already having a success and our start node again is just taking in our input. So we can display our result here and you'll see it's just taking in the date, right? And then we also have our NBA daily data node. And this here is taking in our game date and it's giving us back this payload and it's letting us know we had eight games on that day. Here's some highlights. Here's the away team and all this other information that we're gonna need. But if you look at how much data is in here, there's a lot and we really don't need all of this. Now, this then gets passed to our code node and this is where we take care of truncating that data and making it a lot smaller because we're only asking for the profile, the box score, who the home team was, who the away team was, and the amount of games that did happen on that day. So we have our display result here and we'll see that we have this input given from this API and look how much longer this is from this input that we're getting from the API or this node and how much shorter it is now when we run it through this code because we're only taking out the information that we want. Now, this is being passed to our large language model node. Now, this large language model node is taking this information from this output and running it through this prompt to make it more readable for us. And we show this display result here and we take this input, the same output that we get from here, it turns into an input and it outputs here are the game results. Uh, the NBA games that happen, Milwaukee Bucks, Detroit Pistons, it shows all these games that happen on this date. And notice how this list is a lot shorter now. It's only showing these eight games. So when we pass this large language model node inputs and outputs to our successful end node, we're going to only take out this information that we do want to present to our user, the game results, the game date, and the game count. And if we display our results here, you'll see that we have it custom made on how we've written here in our answer content. And it says there were X amount of games here on this date, and it's going to present it in the way that we want it to. So let's go right here and publish our workflow after a successful run that we just had. And we can go over here to our bot. Currently there's no workflows or plugins in this bot. It's just powered by a persona and prompt at the moment. So what I'm going to do now is just compare how this bot responds without a workflow versus how it will respond when we do add the workflow. So let's just ask this bot the same question we had before. What happens on January 20th? Tell me the scores and let's see. So right now I can already tell you off the bat, this Warriors versus Lakers game did not happen on this date and either did this Heat versus 76ers game. So I'm not sure where this information is coming from. And it doesn't mean that these bots are not intelligent. It's just that it's not tailored for our needs yet. And that's where the workflows come into play. So let's see how this looks when we add a workflow. Now, if I go to, I created and add my workflow to the space, I'll ask this bot the same question again, and then we're going to see how this response is completely different now. So as you can see here, it's going through the workflow. Just remember all those nodes that the inputs are being passed from one node to the next, all the way to get to the end result. And as we look at how this response is, we'll see that this is tailored to how we wrote in our workflow. Remember we wrote in our workflow that there were going to be a certain amount of games on this date. That's how we formatted the text to be. And now this workflow is going through the API and the, also the code node, the large language model all the way to the end to give us the accurate information and the accurate scores that happen on the state. So that's the power of workflows, right? I can specify how I want things to look and tailor make it for my users. All right, so that's how you use workflows with codes. Now it's the most advanced feature when it comes to using the platform. However, you can really see the difference in the quality of the answer your bot gives when you implement a workflow. Now, if you wanna learn more, check out our documentation and also join us on Discord. Keep a lookout for more videos and I'll see you next time.